Welcome to Essential Full Stack Development, the course that is going to completely upgrade your career. Full Stack Development is the hottest, most rewarding, and currently the most financially rewarding skill you want to have under your belt. Now, before we get into what we're going to cover in this course, with that said, this course is for you in most probability if you're watching this video, but under the assumption that you already know JavaScript. That's the only thing, the only prerequisite you must have before taking this course is you need to know JavaScript. You don't need to know anything else. We're going to cover all the other foundations and fundamentals to get you into full stack development. All right, so that's it. That's the prerequisites. So what are we going to cover in this title? This title is revolutionary because it's really going to cover all the foundations that are critical for you to be able to call yourself a full stack developer. So what does that include? So first of all, we're going to, in the first chapter, set things up with basically getting Node.js and NPM up and running. In the second chapter, we're going to go deep into the world of NPM and understand what package managers are and what specifically could you do with NPM, which is the critical technology that with it you're building everything in full stack. Next, we're going to dive deep into the world of Node.js where we'll get you familiar enough to understand how Node.js works so you'll feel comfortable when you're developing in this environment. We're going to also go deeper by taking a look at the Express.js framework, which is in a layer that sits on top of Node.js that makes things easier when it comes to anything that relates to building and working on a server. Last but not least, the most critical skill that you want to wrap things up to be able to say that you know all the critical skills in full stack development is getting you familiar with MongoDB or more accurately the technology behind it which is NoSQL. We're going to understand what no, NoSQL is and literally learn the foundations to enable you to build your own databases. So by the end of this course you're going to be a developer that is working on, on your server you're going to be building server side code, client side code, and also integrating into it NoSQL. What are we going to cover in this first chapter? So this first chapter is really all about setup. And in the setup, we're going to go through the configurations for Windows, the configurations for desktops in general, configurations for a server itself, namely a Linux server, and also specifically how to change the different versions of NPM and Node.js, which are quite different than how it's done on a desktop. With that said, let's jump right into our first lecture. And in the first lecture, we're going to be focused on our Windows users. So if you're running on a Mac, you could stop this video already now and go on to the next video. But if you are a Windows user, what we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to help you make your operating system work more similarly to the way things work on a Linux and on a Mac, because all of the rest of the videos are going to be focused on those users because the production files usually sit on a Linux, which their language is comparable and very similar to the way we work on a Mac. So with that said, for our Windows users in this lecture, we're going to go ahead and set up a terminal, which will mimic the terminal that is available on a Mac and on a Linux operating system, making the, our Windows users have a similar setting to the remainder chapter. So let's jump right in into it, Windows users. Let's see how we set things up to get things working the way that we're going to be working with from the next chapter and onwards. Before we could start installing and working with Node.js, we need to make sure that you have access to a terminal. If you're working on Mac, you already have access to a terminal. It's an application that runs on Mac OS. If you're running on any Linux device, you're probably familiar with the way you go to your Linux prompt, which will work the same way. Now, when you're working on Contraire on Windows, it, you're going to discover that you don't have access to the same Linux commands as we have and will be working with within this course and within most lectures and documentation on Node.js. So to join us, make sure that if you're running on Windows, you install um, CYGWIN. I can't pronounce it. There's other applications that do the same thing, but what they do, it's a wrapper that mimics the behaviors on Linux. So go ahead and based on if you have, um, the link is going to be in the description to this video. Um, Make sure to install or update, well, basically install the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version, depending on your version of Windows. I'm going to go ahead and install the 
32-bit version and I'm gonna run it and once installation will complete just follow the prompts and go ahead and go through the process of the installation I'm gonna keep everything in its default and just click next 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 until we get it downloaded and installed now once you have Sigwin installed um, and I'm gonna it's a little bit out of my screen right now but I'm gonna just go ahead and keep everything the way it is I'm not gonna select any package and I'm gonna click on next and I'm gonna click on next and I'm gonna just go ahead and install whatever the defaults have been so once ins installation completes, uh, we're going to set up the desktop, add it to the start, or I'm going to click here on finish. And once I'm done with this, now because I set everything up to be in the default, if you look at your prompt, you will see that we in, on your desktop, you should have the Seguin terminal. Now if I go ahead and double click in it, I'm going to be entered into this terminal. Now to make sure that everything is working is well, basically any time that I actually mention and say terminal or say go on to your terminal or you see me working in this in a prompt, make sure that you open the Seguin terminal because we're going to refer to it through the remainder of the course as terminal. 